Hello everybody! Welcome back to our paper bag mini album. This is Dana and we're gonna make some more headway today on this. I hope y'all are doing okay. Hope you're enjoying the process. And so the first thing that I want to do is we left off, we inserted all of our pages and I want to address the inside front and back cover. So the first thing I want to do is mat them, okay? And so we know that our covers were five and a half by seven and a half. So I've already cut and pre-inked all of my pieces here just to save us some time of you having to watch certain things. So I went to my paper pad to pick out because I'm trying to use up most of my scraps. And, um, but I didn't have scraps big enough for my covers plus my inside front covers. So I went to my paper pad and I chose a piece of paper and I cut them down to size. And because our covers are five and a half by seven and a half, our inside front covers are going to be five and a quarter by seven and a quarter, okay? So I'm just gonna glue these down. I remembered to put my phone in airplane mode. <laughs> All these things you have to remember to do adjusting to a new phone. Okay, so this is gonna mat right inside here. I thought that vine, that little tree branch with the apples, the apple tree branch I thought was really pretty. Okay, and let's do the back. And then we're gonna do a pocket here. Okay. We'll get this glued down. Get that in place. Isn't that pretty? Okay. So let's work on our pocket. Okay, so what I've got, I'm gonna set this aside for just a minute, because so I'm gonna need my scoreboard. And I've already done one that's ready to go. Okay, so I've got a piece of our craft cardstock, and it measures six and a half by three and a half. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna score on three sides at half an inch, okay? So one long side and both short sides will score at half an inch. Okay. Where's my gold folder? Okay, and then we're gonna fold and burnish on our score lines. To snip our corners and I'm gonna snip right through where these two score lines meet okay so we're gonna miter the corners and just snip right through the middle of the X just like that now because I'm inking the parts of my album I'm gonna go ahead and just ink this up really quick So that it is cohesive with the rest of my album that I'm doing. Of course, if you're not inking, you don't need to worry about it. So I have my other one prepared as well. Let's keep track of my pin for my glue this time around. So I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to add glue to all three flaps. A little on the front, but that's okay. Art glitter glue dries clear. I 
I'm not putting glue in the straightest of lines here today. Okay, and I'm just gonna lay this in place and it's gonna sit flush with the edges. Or as flush as I can get it. Just like this. I wanna try and go all the way to the left hand side if I can, so I can kind of clear my gusset here where my book folds closed. Okay, kind of burnish that into place. Okay, my book's still folding rather well. The pocket's hanging off just a little, but that's okay. Not a big deal. Okay, let's do for the back here. do the same thing. I'm going to try and just kind of line it up to my edges here and make it flush with my edges. Okay, now we need to mat these. So I'm going to go to my scraps. I should have some scraps that look good. Okay, so our uh, mats are going to measure two and three quarters tall by five and a quarter wide. So let's see what I've got. I bagged up all my scraps. Let's see what I have that might fit here and look nice with everything that I'm looking at, this whole kind of layout right here in the front. Let's see what I have. Now this is the same as this, but I think it probably actually will be okay because I'm gonna decorate this pocket. So it's not just gonna sit here with just the plaid. It's gonna have some decoration on it. So I think we'll use that piece. And I think these green, this green with the gold apples would look pretty over there. So let's use that piece for there. Sit these out of the way here. Bring in my paper cutter. Okay, so five and a quarter by two and three quarters. Five and a quarter by two and three quarters. ink. Now I know this ink is not showing up on um, this dark green paper, okay, but it's getting rid of this white edge from cutting the paper. I don't like that white edge showing. Okay, let's glue these down. Bring our book back in. books just our albums coming together looks so good I love this paper collection I should have got myself two but actually I'll tell you you know after doing this mini album um, I still have so much paper left I, I didn't even use half the pack 
So there's still a ton of paper left to be used there. Okay, we got those done. Okay, now I wanna cover my covers, front cover, back cover, and spine. Okay, so I went ahead and I trimmed everything ahead of time. Okay, so for our cover here, again, we have five and a half by seven and a half. So my mat is five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. So that'll fit just like that. And on the back too, same size. And then my spine, what I do with my spine, because you actually have, even though our spine is three inches, we actually have a little more space than that because we have our eighth inch gap that we left when we put our spine together so that our, our book could close and open. Um, so what I do with that is I go ahead and do seven and a quarter, you know, just the same kind of height gap that we use. And the width, instead of taking a quarter inch off and making it two and three quarters wide, I actually only take an eighth off. And so I did two and seven eighths and you see that fits perfectly. If I had gone two and three quarters, it just would have been this, this my mat would have been too narrow. Okay, so when you're looking at covering the spine of any of your albums, take into consideration that there, there was gaps here of paper that's folded over so your spine is actually a little bit larger than three inches or whatever it is that you, you made your spine. So only take an eighth of an inch off there. So since we're here, I'll go ahead and just glue the spine down, the spine mat. And I just used scraps. I didn't cut new pieces of paper. The only new piece of paper that I cut today was for my inside front and back covers. There, that looks, that plaid looks so good on the spine. Maybe we'll do like a, like a dangle or something. Um, maybe we'll put an eyelet here in the middle or something like that. I don't know, we'll have to see. Okay, and I chose this for my front cover. So let's lay that down. I did not ink my cover yet, so I'll have to go back and do that. Make sure I've got that even all the way around. Pretty, I love that red leaf paper. It's so pretty. Okay, and the back. I traditionally use my um, least favorite paper on the back of my albums, the back cover of my albums. Um, I didn't do that here. Um, I basically, um, not that this paper I'm using is my least favorite, cause it's not. Cause I really love this red with the little color apples, but it was a scrap that I had that would fit. And in cutting it the right size, the orientation of my apples were gonna be the wrong way. And so I thought, well, the back is um, a good place for that. And I didn't want to have to cut into a new piece of paper. So I just used it because it was gonna be on the back. All right, let me close my glue. So the next thing I did was we have our, um, we have our top loading pockets from, from our paper bags, okay? So what I've done for these is I've used my craft card stock, okay? And I cut these at, let me see my little notes. I wrote this down somewhere. Okay, inserts. These were my starting measurements, were seven and a half inches tall by four and three quarters wide. And I used my edge pens. This is one that was in my Goodwill haul a couple of videos ago, and I wanted to use this. So I punched the edge. And it, um, and when you use an edge punch, it takes a little bit of the um, 
paper off. That's why I started with um, a seven and a half inch piece because our pockets, our bags, remember we trimmed them to seven. So our bag, bags are seven inches tall. So the reason that I cut my insert at seven and a half was because I wanted this punched frilly edge to hang out the top of the bag. So we put this in here. You'll see that the top of it, we just have that frilly edge at the top, which I think is a nice effect as you're going through your pages. Okay, so that's how I did those. So seven and a half by four and three quarters and I edged punched the top edge. And then I just cut mats. Um, um, I'm only gonna mat one side of them. Okay, so this will look like this. And then I'm just gonna leave the back blank. You can either put a photo here. It's a great journaling spot. Um, so I'm just, I'm not matting that other side. I'm gonna leave that for journaling and you know, whatever or extra pictures. Um, some people do less journaling than others, so it would be a great spot for another picture. And these mats and inserts are a size where you could put a full four by six photo on there without having to crop it. So these five inserts will fit either five or 10 full size pictures. And again, the mats came from my scraps. Don't wanna waste paper, unless you have really specific paper that you wanna use. By all means, cut new sheets if you want to. Such pretty paper. Gosh, don't you just love creating stuff with pretty paper? Oh, I love it. You know, we sit and we get these beautiful paper collections, paper pads, and so often we just let them sit on our shelves because we don't, you know, I know for me, I can't bring myself sometimes to cut them because they're just so pretty. And you know, that just makes no sense. What are we buying them for? to sit on our shelves so we can look at them. So sometimes I literally have to just make myself do a project with them because they're beautiful and I wanna create something beautiful with them. Okay, last one. Great. Oh, I really love that the apples on that craft color. It looks really pretty. Okay, let's load these in. These are ready now. Close my glue. And I'm gonna kind of do like two, because I did two of these and two of these. So I'm gonna kind of spread them out in the album, and then I did one of these, so I'll put these in the middle because I've got five. All right, so we're just gonna load these into our pockets, just like that. Now you could do two inserts if you wanted. There's plenty of room for that. So you can load these pockets up. We've got half an inch gap in between our pages. So there is plenty of room to even add more. Maybe when we make our ephemeral, we'll make some extra tags and put a tag in here too. Okay, so that's what that looks like. 
Isn't that cool? It looks really nice with the frilly edges hanging out the top. I like that. Okay, so now we are at a point where we're ready to start with our ephemera. So, um, first thing I want to do is I want to go through the paper pad and I want to pull any sheets because we're making our own. Obviously, if this had cut apart sheets, we'd be cutting those out. Um, but it doesn't. It, do it has these here. Okay, so we can probably crop this one down. I'm not sure about this one. Let me, where's my ruler? Let's see what this measures across. That is almost a five. So I'm not sure this will work because our pockets are less than five. So I think maybe we'll save this and we can crop this down and use it on the cover. Okay, so let's see what else we have in here. I saw a lady online that used these um, big sheets. I always struggle. What do you do with these sheets other than like home decor and stuff? And she made gift bags out of them, which I thought was great because they come with two. So maybe we'll have to do that. Okay, I'm gonna want this sheet. Okay, because these banners can um, um, be cut out. These little sayings, sweet as pie, hello fall and harvest, we can Definitely cut these out, use them on tags. These can be cut out and used on tags um, and journaling cards. So we want that page. Let's see what else we have. Okay, we're definitely gonna want this page. We're gonna fussy cut all these items out here. All of these things, we're, I'm gonna fussy cut these out, okay? I loved this fussy cut sheet. Um, so we'll will uh, I'll cut these out tonight so that the pieces will be available for us to use on ephemera tomorrow. I think that's it. I'm pretty sure there wasn't anything else as far as to be able to use. Not really. Um, I think I'm gonna pull this sheet out though. What I'm thinking is, I'm thinking journaling cards. And if we utilize just like this part of it right here, this four by six part, this is a great background and we can decorate it with maybe some of these fussy cut images and make this into a journaling, cat, ta, uh, journaling card. And we've got a couple of corners that we can utilize for that. So I'm thinking we can utilize this piece here So let's do that really quick. Let me do four by six. That's a good size for a journaling card for um, for these for these pockets here, these bigger ones. Um, let's see what we can let's see what we can come up with. So let's go six. And then we can do four and get this little corner here, right here. That'll make a really cute journaling card. And then we'll do four over here and grab this corner and use that as a journaling card. I think those will work really good. So let's just work on these couple of journaling cards here in the time that we have left. So I'm gonna, I think I wanna round the corners of them. Let me grab my corner rounder. Just on the quarter inch side.
And then I'm going to give them some ink just because that's what I'm doing in this album. I want to stay consistent. And again, just covering up that kind of white edge that comes across. But I am going to do the back because obviously this is where the journaling spot is and I want that to look cohesive with the rest of the album. Do this one really quick and I'll show you how we're just going to build a cute little journaling card out of this when you've got no stickers and no cut aparts. So what we're going to do is we're just going to layer up some elements. Almost done here. There we go. Okay, so this here's what we're working with. And I was looking at this. You see, hello fall. That go could go right across the top. Harvest could work too. So let's cut this out. Let's cut out this little strip. that with my scraps. Have to line this up really good with my cut line here. Okay, so let's work with that. So first, let's see here. Maybe running all the way across. So where are my scissors? I'm just gonna cut straight up and grab this part that says hello fall. And if I can get the leaf in, I would like to, which it looks like I can. So I'm just gonna line this up because I'm gonna have this go edge to edge and I'm just gonna trim off on the other side so it's even with the edge. Okay, we got the little leaf there. And I noticed that I left some of the print from the previous little banner on here. So I'm gonna trim that off. There we go. All right. So this can lay out like this. I think it'll look cute on the leaves one. And then let's see, I gotta cut this top off of here. And then we can use this one here. And this leaf I'm, looks out of place to me, so I'm gonna trim it off. Looks fine on the Hello Fall, but for some reason on the Harvest, it looked out of place to me. I'm gonna make my word even with as much space on each side as the other. Okay, so there's our little sentiments we'll work with. Okay, so the first thing I'm thinking here, I'm not gonna ink this because it's got gold edges. I'm thinking some lace um, is what I'm thinking. Ooh, you know, I have this. I haven't used this and I'm wondering, it's got, let's see, I'll take this pin out. I'm wondering Pretty wide. Oh, that looks good. I could use it like that and just, okay, we're gonna make this one fairly simple. Let me cut an even cut here so I can line this up. I have the hardest time telling what is the right side of lace. I think it's this side. Maybe we'll put it kind of up near the top no, I think down on the bottom because I'm thinking maybe a butterfly right here. Okay, let's glue let's glue our lace down. I use Fabri-Tac here. I 
I'm thinking that in my butterfly stash, I have some little monarch butterflies that I think would be really fall, fallish that would go well on here. Okay, so let's lay this lace in just like this. And then we'll glue our sentiment right on top. And I'm going edge to edge with this. So my lace is hanging over, so I wanna make sure that I'm looking at the edge of my actual journaling card when I lay this down. All right, there we go. Now I'm just gonna trim the edge. I never throw away little pieces like this because I make little clusters and those are perfect for little clusters. Now this one I will throw away. <laughs> it's it's itty bitty. Little scraps. Okay. So in that pretty with the lace. Let me pull my butterflies out. Let's see where are they? Here they are. Let me find one of my little monarchs or something that is going to look kind of fall. Let's see here. I've actually got a lot that look fall. Here's a monarch, but I think it's gonna be too big. Yeah, that's way too big. Oh, here's one. That looks like it would fit. Oh, that's pretty. Let's see if we have something even smaller. That one's not gonna work. I'm gonna keep this one, because I like that one. Yeah, I think we'll use this one. Okay, put these up for now. We'll definitely be pulling those out as we make ephemera, as we make tags and things like that because I've got a lot of kind of fall colors in here that would look nice with this. Okay. I'm just gonna dull down some of the white here. Okay. And we'll use Fabri-Tac since it's going over some of this lace right here. Really cute. I think I think I want a little something down here. Let's see what I have as far as like bling. I have some green. Use that. Just run it right across the bottom here. Let's see how much we need of it. I think I'll cut it off right there. I've got this little thing sticking on the back of it. Okay, we'll save that. Let's run a line of art glitter glue down the bottom here. Goober. Okay. We'll just lay this right in the glue. Right 
right there. There we go. Really cute journaling card, yeah? Okay, let's do the other one. Let's do this right here so we can look at it. Okay. So I'm thinking on this one, let's see. Maybe let's layer up some lace and we'll just kind of make a I just my eyes landed on something I have these little crocheted flowers that I thought would be cute Let's see what we can do with one of those as our texture and embellishment um, let's see I'm just looking at some of the scraps I have over here. Let's see here. Hmm. I have this material that has nothing to do with ball, but it's definitely the right colors. So maybe we can use that as a layering piece. Maybe. If it doesn't work, we won't use it. Okay. So we start here and then maybe some lace. Let's see. Oh, I got a little bit of muslin here. That might be good. Oh, I've got this little piece of lace too. We're just gonna start layering some things up, okay? Let's see what we can come up with here. Okay, so we've got that and that. What if we did this like across here, kind of at the bottom? Put this like that. I don't know how big our sign is here. Like that. Okay, our, our, our book so far has been very precise as far as measurements and things like that. And so I wanted to take the opportunity with our um, embellishments to bring in a little more whimsy with as far as how things are laid out, okay? So that's why I'm kind of doing just a little um, kind of, uh, what I'm, thinking is my sewing machine is like buried right now because I was thinking about just sewing the top and bottom of this which I would really like to do um let's see I'm gonna scooch over here to my sewing machine really quick um see if I can unbury it enough to <laughs> enough to just sew across here Bear with me. Okay. And do the other side. really wanted to do. <laughs> wanted to sew that and I think I'm even going to kind of leave some of the threads hanging a little bit. You know, not a lot, but okay. I like that. 
I wish I had had brown thread in there, but that's okay. So now we just have one little piece here and we can glue that down right here. And this little flower, I'm still not sure about it. Yeah, well that'll work. And we'll put some like kind of bling or something in the middle. So, all right, let's do that. add some glue here. I'm not going to put any Fabri-Tac on this piece of muslin right here that runs across the bottom because it will show through. So we'll just kind of let that flow and be the muslin. Maybe like a little, little bitty dot just to kind of keep it down a little. like that there we go you can see it a little but not too too much okay let's put this little crocheted flower on here and find something for the center a button might be cute Kind of layer it up on up on our embellishment a little bit. Let's see what I've got in my button container. Because I think that would be cute. Let's see. Oh, I've got these that are just like dark brown. Those might be cute. There's some like Christmassy ones, but they've got some nice reds. I think I like the brown. Let's use the brown. Find the right size here. I think that might be a little too big. I have anything smaller. Here's one that's a little bit smaller. Yeah, let's do that. That's cute. some fabric tack on here put that right in the middle all right and maybe I've got this little piece here maybe we'll just put that right down there in the corner Use that up. There. Really cute. I like it. Okay. So just a couple pieces of paper cut off from the 12 by 12 using utilizing the corner print and layering some other elements and we've got two really cute journaling cards here so I'm gonna leave those and put them off to the side so they can completely dry before we put them in our book and when we get together tomorrow we'll start to kind of mass produce some um, tags and journaling cards and things for all of our pockets and um, work our way into being done with this mini album so I hope you join me tomorrow and I hope you enjoyed this today. And as always, have a wonderful day. God bless and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.